Greetings, Deputy President, uh, Deputy Ministers, Ministers, and in following with protocol, I will say protocol observed, all protocol observed. A great giant to show the globe like a colossal has fallen. A mind whose thoughts have opened the doors to our liberty has ceased to function. A heart whose dreams gave hope to the despised has forever lost its beat. The gentle voice whose measured words of reason shook the thrones of tyrants has been silenced. Those are borrowed words from the late great uh, Honorable former President Nelson Mandela at the funeral of the late great Oliver Tambo. I found that they truly encompass the, the sentiment of having have lost the great. And I say that without being sensational, without exaggerating, but with complete honesty and, and humility. To some of you here, um, my old man was a colleague. To some, he was a friend. To some, he was a, I suppose I could say, trash-talking golf player. To some, he was, or to not some, but he was a husband, he was also a son, and he was also a father. To my sister and I, he was everything. And by everything, I mean he was the colleague that would aspire to be like based on how much his colleagues commended his work ethic. He was the friend we dream of having based on how much his friends commended him on his loyalty. He was the husband any wife would want based on how much my mother dearly loved him. He was the son any father would be proud of and as a father, he was a father that both my sister and I will never forget, and I'm eternally grateful to have had him. The, one of the first memories that I have of my father um, was, I think I was about six, seven, and he promised me that we're going to go to Johannesburg. So we grew up in Limpopo. I grew up in Limpopo. So Johannesburg was a big deal for me, going to Johannesburg. That's where dynamite, deep blue, glue, was, yizu, yizu, all these things. That's how I thought of, 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 of Johannesburg. And fearing that maybe his mind might change, I said to him, no, I'm going to be with him the entire day. So we went to meetings, I was with him. And eventually, towards the late afternoon, we, as a family, we all left and we headed towards uh, the carousel. The carousel is a casino that's just, well, it's before you even get to Pretoria. So we went inside there, my sister and I played it's a sorts of games, your card games, your, I was amazed by the different funny lights. It was, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a dream for me. This was, this was the best job. It was better than this uh, Dynamite Deep Blue Blue, this user user thing that I'd been seeing on TV. Um, so after that experience, I went home. Uh, on the Monday, I went to school bragging to everyone about how, no, look, I, I, I had the time of my life in Johannesburg. It's a city like no other. 
and and I'd recommend anyone to go there. So that, that caused an argument between me and one of my classmates who was quick to tell me that, no, no, I've never been there. Uh, we got into a bit of an argument to which I started calling the teacher a liar because she too was saying I had not been to Johannesburg. Um, eventually I went home, uh, asked my dad if perhaps I could change schools because they're stupid there and they don't know, they don't know Johannesburg. Um, much to my surprise, it was myself who, who didn't know Johannesburg. Um, I, I say that to, to make a point of what it is that my father taught us, and it was to be appreciative. Be appreciative of, of all small things, of all big things. Be appreciative. Appreciation is, for me, a gift that he has bestowed upon us, that we take nothing for granted. And even after finding out that I had actually not even left Limpopo, technically speaking, um, I was still in, in Limpopo, I was, I was still very much happy for that experience that I had. I also recall um, there was a time when my sister and I and him were playing with these toy cars which you wind back and then it rolls forward. And he was very much fasc fascinated with this car. Uh, so much so that my sister said to him, Gas Papa, I'm just I'm just I'm a toy now. So, uh, which translates to, have you never seen a toy car before? Um, that brought tears to my dad's eyes. Um, why not? Because he's never seen a toy car before, but that's an experience which for the longest time, I knew back then in any case, so still young, I knew back then that that was an experience that for him, for, for a great deal of his life, he never thought he'd get to experience. And, and him playing with that toy car with him and his son and his daughter meant, meant that much to him. They also more recently, I remember, I was meeting with some people, and anyone that knows me and knows my sister know that we don't do anything without, you know, consulting our father. So as I was stepping outside to answer his call, I could hear in the background him saying to me, Jesus, is he going to ask his dad if he can drink water as well? <laughs> so <laughs> so I, 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 I took no offense to that um, because I knew why. I, I, I consulted my dad on almost everything, and that I did, or that I thought. And it was because I knew that that was my biggest decision, to say he will always have my family and my son's best interests at heart. So much so that there was, um, I remember when you first got appointed to the Honorable President's cabinet, I think it was around 2009, 2010. There was an article that came out um, about the minister's misuse of a credit card. So what my, my old man did is he took his credit card and then he went and brought us groceries. Um, which granted when, when, this, when this scandal, so to speak, came out, he, he already paid for, already refunded uh, this credit card. But the point that I was making there is even when he was stepping outside of what it is that he was supposed to be doing. He was merely trying to get my sister and I, you know, some Rice Krispies and juice, basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> my, my role here as representing the family is, is, is quite simple. Uh, we're here to give thanks um, and give humble appreciation for the overwhelming support that we received from leaders of industry, from leaders in government, from his friends, from even people that don't know him. We throughout this week haven't had the chance to obviously look at anything that's been said outside of within our own corridors, but the feedback that we've gotten has been very positive and for that as a Chavani family, we're very grateful for having honored our father in this way. To my cousins, or in my, in my culture, it's, it's um, my brothers and sisters. Papa Basiba Fambil, Lam Sabin. 
Marenga tu kwa pamoja kwa sika kati mbilta ina. Inga tu kwa pamoja kwa sika kati mbilta ina. To my aunts and uncles, both in our na wa family, and you've lost a brother, you've lost a sister. But you've you've gained two children. To my wonderful sister, it's again. All I can say is that you must sing. You must sing, and you must sing, and you must sing. My. Dad was very passionate about my sister's uh, singing career or, or, or her dream of singing, her passion for singing. And all he would have wanted her to do is to continue with her dream and continue to do what makes her happy. Because what makes her happy is what made him happy. The, 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 greatest, woman, the greatest man that I know is, is in fact not a man, is a woman. And that's my mother. My old man, whenever, whenever he got an opportunity to talk about the family and us, the one thing that he'd always dwell on was how my mother allowed him to do the work that he does, in that his schedule was, was, was demanding. Uh, unfortunately, at times, he's never home. But he always made the point to say, Whenever he had to leave for work, he knew that his family was fine because his wife had brought up his children thus far and should continue to do so, the children which he was very proud of. So, Mama Nagum Zelakuri, Mr. Gu Agnetin Chinchum, Agnetin Chinchum, nothing is going to change. You have been, you, do, you don't need to become a father and a mother. Your role as a mother has been more than enough and it will always continue to be more than enough. When, when thinking about what to say today, um, I was told that I should, I should speak from the heart and you know, speak from the heart, speak from the heart. The, uh, which, which I suppose makes sense, but the problem that I was having is that my, if I was to speak from the heart, I felt my, I'd deliver half a speech, which would be broken down into tears. I say half a speech because I feel as though half my heart is now left. I say broken down into tears because my heart has been shattered. And the tears because my heart has not stopped weeping since Sunday. So I, I then opened a diary. I have a diary where in the top of every diary there's quotations. Uh, there's a quotation for the day. And, and so what I decided to do is going to go to the 15th of April. The quotation on the 15th of April, which was, uh, or which is my father's birthday, and it read, "All happiness you ever find lies in you." And I thought, well, that's useless. Um, I was looking for something about, "All happiness from above will remain forever," or something to that effect, you know. But I really thought about it, and and and. All happiness you ever find lies in you. And what that means is that my father has never left us. He's with us, he's in us, and he'll continue to do so for so long as we love him, for so long as he loves us, and for so long as we let him. <laughs> One eight yan, Washakan, Wachaban, Waming, Wadlaman, 
Omashakaz, Wamaleng, Wagunul, Nko. Kumbela kuri miba mi urukwani le itwa kashe ban maskwem. Ani itwa. A kensa matemba natakani. Thank you very much, the two children of our.